What's going on, everyone? Raphael Locklear here again with Constructive Conversations. Today, we're meeting no other than Mr. James Sanders III. How are you doing? I'm good, my brother. How are you? Man, listen, I'm, I'm going to steal what my buddy Troy says. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Be stressed. <laughs> so, yeah, I want to thank you for coming on, and I'm a... Uh, you know, we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to pass the mic over to you, kind of let you do a brief introduction to the sure, audience. Sure. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a professor of communications at Fayetteville Technical Community College. I'm also a motivational speaker, and it's something that's really near and dear to me. It's a, one of my passions, and I definitely love to be able to share my gift with different audiences, whether it be, you know, high school, college, or even corporations. I'm also a radio show host, so I host. Nice. Those, I, I can host. I can hear it in the voice. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you. I'm yeah. I'm the ho I'm one of the co-hosts of the crossover, okay. which is a show of three men of edu of education and family, mm -hmm. and uh, we talk about different uh, different concepts, different topics from a faith based perspective. Nice. That's nice, on W I D U. Nice. And then, last but not least, something that's very near and dear to me is me being a mentor, mm -hmm. and uh, being a mentor is something that I know is part of my purpose, part of my walk as a man as well, too, being able to give back and to be able to help to shape, you know, the next generation, you know, because they're up next. Nice. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, looking at, you know, the information, kind of getting to know you a little bit better. The thing that, out of all the things, the one thing that, that strikes me just because of where I'm at in my walk mm -hmm. right now is uh, communications. Sure. Seems like you've got a specialty or expertise in communications. Yes, yes. I've been teaching now uh, in higher ed now for uh, 14 years uh -huh. and uh, been a communications instructor for that amount of time and learned a lot about the different uh, aspects of communication mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to interpersonal mm -hmm. uh, communication, maintaining relationships, mm -hmm. uh, building relationships, understanding connections, mm -hmm. and then, of course, uh, dealing with conflict resolution, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, being able to understand one another, listen better. So how, do, how did you go about learning or obtaining those skill sets? I went to school. Uh, I, had my, I had an opportunity to be able to go and get my bachelor's in media and communications from SUNY College of Westbury in Long Island. Okay. And that's where I kind of got my foundation. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, kind of took that to the next step and obtained my master's from the New York Institute of Technology mm -hmm. in Long Island mm -hmm. in broadcast journalism. So I wanted to be a reporter, and so I then got a better understanding of uh, you know communications, and mm -hmm. then eventually got into teaching. But nice. you know throughout the years, Ralph, it's always been just learning, you know, just understanding information, understanding trends, and seeing how I can obviously utilize that information and apply it to my field. Yeah, and so the thing that's interesting for me, and you know, in the construction industry, mm -hmm. I, I when I got started. You know, there's different mindsets. I'm of the mindset of take action. Right. Just do it. You figure right. it out. And, right. You know, as great as that has been, there's been a lot of a lot of struggle with mm -hmm. that same same mindset. Um, I was just telling you a little earlier. You know, where I'm at in my walk with business, sure, and, and even in life, mm -hmm. the thing that has struck me the most is that when I do questions online, social media or whatnot. Right. It is the norm. It is known. Our biggest complaint, our meaning contractors, mm -hmm. you know, the complaint people have when working with contractors is communication. Sure. And I guess that could <clears throat> go for men in general primarily, but, you know, it's <laughs> like, you know, you doesn't matter who you ask. It's yeah. always that same thing. And so when I go out and I look for, you know, like specific mm -hmm. trainings, mm -hmm. You know, because everybody can't go to a four-year college. Everybody right. can't get that 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 level of uh, dedication over a long period of time and mm -hmm. learning it formally. And but the problem is most of us don't learn it even right. you know in life. Mm -hmm. You know, so I believe, and as I've as I've grown in business, I've seen how it either makes or breaks your business. How well you communicate with people, your ability to get along with other mm -hmm. people, and. I've had to learn it the hard way through trial and error in the mm. midst of relationships with clients and sure. failing and, and sure. you know, self-reflecting, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. How could I have done it better? Right. And I realized that is one of the most important skill sets, if not the most important skill set. And once you become great at that, or yes. at least not even great, just above average at mm -hmm. that, it can carry you so far. If you were to... Take a mentee, you know, someone just and, and like their their goal was to like I want to become great at that in sure. the shortest amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, 
what do you think would be the key steps in a particular order to take someone who's not a great communicator to becoming someone who's above average? So the first thing that I would definitely would want to do is just to have a very real conversation, mm -hmm. right? And get them to be able to understand why they may not necessarily be the communicator that they are right now, mm -hmm. but to also instill a level of hope and confidence in them so that they understand the steps that we're going to take together will ultimately help you to be a more proficient and a better communicator overall. The second thing that I would do is to be able to look at their communication style mm -hmm. and understand, hey, you're communicating this way for a reason, and guess what? It's not the most effective way for you to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So here's, our, here's some tricks, you know, some tips that I can share with you to be able to help build better communication. Mm -hmm. Then the third thing is to actually see you in action mm -hmm. when you're actually interacting with customers, when you're actually into, you know, uh, you know, observing clients, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you want to be able to see how you're interacting with your colleagues as well, mm -hmm. too, your team members. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, being able to put you in different scenarios, <laughs> different situations. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be a, a, a situation mm -hmm. or a scenario with your significant other or with a colleague. Mm -hmm. And we do role playing. So then it puts them in a position to be able to see some of the errors in their ways and that we help to kind of reboot how they actually get across to be able to communicate better mm -hmm. going forward. What is some of the best um, best success stories that you've seen where you've, you've in your experience, have mm -hmm. seen someone that was totally failing at that ability and then, you know, turning that around? Sure. I think uh, when it comes to my students, first and foremost, my students come in they have a particular mindset. They have a, a disposition when it comes to being able to be, you know, being a communicator. So you have to address the mindset first. Absolutely. You definitely want to be able to take a look at the mindset and understand exactly what you're working with. Why is that important? Because you want to be able to see exactly who this person is, mm -hmm. right? I come across as a person who is very outgoing, mm -hmm. who wants to engage in communication, mm -hmm. right? Who wants to talk to you. And I have no qualms in being able to hold a conversation. There are some people who come across as being very reserved or maybe standoffish and aren't necessarily looking to drive a conversation, Ralph. Mm -hmm. And so there, I got to be able to meet you where you are. Gotcha. I got to be able to understand that. Once I see the mindset, then I can take steps to be able to connect with you mm -hmm. and to be able to reach you. Once I'm able to do that, I'm able to then start to work my magic mm -hmm. and to have you build into the, what I like to call the process. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to give me your best effort. Mm -hmm. Then secondly, I want to be able to have you buy in to what I'm selling you. So yeah, like if someone, you had a mentor, mentee and they're like, you know, hey, I understand, but why? I mean, what's, what's the big deal? I'm right, because I have to have them know their why. Mm -hmm. There's a purpose for why you're communicating and why you need to be able to connect with different people in different circles mm -hmm. so that you can be a well-rounded individual. Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing for you, it's one thing for my mentee to be able to talk to their friends. They can talk to their friends, mm -hmm. no problem. But how about when you're talking to, you know, your, uh, your supervisor at your internship mm -hmm. or a professor mm -hmm. or you're talking to uh, someone that, that's looking, you're looking to get a job, mm -hmm. right, your employer. All those things are very important. And so communication is something that uh, is essential mm -hmm. to our lives because it's, it's really a life skill. You know, one of the things that I find interesting is that as, we've, as we get older, especially entering in the workforce, mm -hmm. that skill set becomes, becomes super important even when we don't realize it. But I've often, I've often asked myself, like, why is it that kids intuitively – like at great at sales, for right. example, sales right. is part of communication. Mm -hmm. It's intertwined, and but as we get older, because it's something that's not focused on, we literally suck at effectively communicating. Right. So, in the construction industry, and in dealing with people, dealing with clients in general, right. I've had to read books, um, take courses, absolutely. You know, study people, mm -hmm. and um, that, that's great at it, and mm -hmm. and kind of do a course correction on what I needed to fix in my life. Right. And I initially did it with the purpose in mind of like, I got to become great at this in order to succeed in business. And also because if I don't succeed in business, you know, um, it, it's, it's got big ramifications. Sure. So the more that I learned 
how to use that in the business world, I started realizing too is super critical for my marriage. It is, you know, being able to communicate with my kids and not reacting, you know, with emotions, learning how to curb the emotions yes. and learn, you know, and I think so many of us fail with that because we just strictly react off of emotions. Mm -hmm. And I think that is that we're we're in the process. Do you? <clears throat> Does that come up when you're, you know, getting someone down that journey to becoming a great communicator? Sometimes it could be at the very beginning, you know, just because of once again who you know you're actually interacting with. Mm -hmm. Emotions do play a, a vital part in terms of how we communicate, but it's something that you 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 brought up. You have to be able to know when to turn things on and turn things off. Mm -hmm. Time and place go a long way. Mm -hmm. Common sense is something that still needs to be common. We know that I keep hearing common sense isn't common anymore. Right, you know? right, right. And Ralph, you know, understand that, yes, you have a marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a wife to go home to. You have kids that are looking up to you as their mm -hmm. father, right? Mm -hmm. And when it's about business, there's a way in which you have to be able to communicate with business, mm -hmm. but it's a lot different than the way that you have to be able to talk to your kids mm -hmm. and the way that you have to be able to communicate with your wife, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So it, it's a it's really a balance. Mm -hmm. And communicating is a lot about give and take too, Ralph, because mm -hmm. you want to be able to help people understand when you're interacting with individuals, there's a certain way that you need to be able to communicate with people. Tone has a lot to do with that. Your volume has a lot to be able to do with that. We could probably have a conversation and, you know, we could talk about a multitude of things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, our range in terms of how we, we speak, some things might be a little bit, you know, more exciting mm -hmm. than those that may not necessarily be. It just all depends on the topic, right? Mm -hmm. And the familiarity, right. right, as men. Right. But when we're in different circles, You've got to know how to be able to navigate the gift of gab. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to know how to connect with individuals so that you can seem to be very understanding mm -hmm. and be very mindful mm -hmm. of how we come across as communicators. Now, you said the gift of gab, you know, uh, is it of your belief that certain people are just born with those innate skills? Some people and are, and some people you have to be able to actually hone them. So it can be learned. It can yeah. be learned, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I know some speakers who weren't necessarily the best speakers in the very beginning, but mm -hmm. they have had to be able to learn how to be able to utilize this and understand this skill. Mm -hmm. uh, because there are some individuals who just naturally have it. They mm -hmm. can come in and they can own a room, mm -hmm. you know, and they can have just really solid conversations. They don't need you to be able to drive the conversation. They can drive the conversation or know when to be able to pull back as well, right. too. And there's one thing I'll share with you guys is that mm -hmm. if if you take an intentional approach to learn this skill set with communications, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter what walk of life you're in. I think no it's one of the things that gives you the biggest returns all across the board. It does. And so what I've had to learn to do is... I'm a very process oriented person. You know, it's like I'm a, if you if I can see the blueprint and I can read the blueprint, Absolutely. I'm good. But if I can't see it, you know, I'm kinda <laughs> lost in the sauce. But for me, it was like I learned this lesson when I when I lost two sales back okay. to back and I really needed to close those deals. Mm -hmm. And um, I made the mistake of booking two high high pressure deals back to back. Sure. And um, you know, a little young and naive and and I had one of my business partners sitting in the deal with me, just kind of observing. Mm -hmm. And long story short, I bombed those deals. Okay, you know, okay. And we really needed them. And when the when the clients when we were done with both meetings, my partner looked at me was like, Dude, "What were you doing? Mm -hmm. Like your communication skills, your reading. You don't, you know, you, you didn't even read your room. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like you had the folks sold; they were ready to go, and you still you unsold them and unsold them in one meeting. You right. did it back to back." Mm -hmm. You're never going to succeed in business if you don't get a grip on that. Right. And so I'm the type of person who's like, okay, they even though that was horrible, I knew exactly what I needed to work sure. on. So I went in and I actually started make, you know, started studying, learning, you know, what is what is effective communication? Mm -hmm. like what is, what does it consist of? Tonality, right? You know, um, intentionality. Absolutely. When you're talking with someone, yes. you're making eye contact with them. You're blocked everything mm -hmm. else you're taking notes about the key points of what they're saying right once they're done you're reiterating to them exactly what they said to yes. make sure you're understanding yes. they feel like that you you're listening you've gotten them you know what they're expecting and you know 
they've told you past experience, if they've worked with contractors, right. and you're making notes of all these things. And so what I did to be able to get good at it is that I created kind of like my own process. Okay. And I created like a typical customer journey, meaning mm-hmm. like someone you, you, you've you decided you need to hire a builder. Right. To build a new building for your business or you want to build that custom home. And it's my job mm-hmm. as a contractor, if I'm wanting to dominate my industry, right. I got to already know majority of all the questions that you're going to ask way before we even meet. But however, to be a co- good communicator, you can't you can't come like I already know what you're going to ask me. Absolutely, you're going to ask me this, this, and this. now you don't, you you've blown it that <laughs> way, right? Yes. So one of the things that was most intriguing to me is as I laid out this this process mm-hmm. and the customer journey, sure, and trained myself to sit back, enjoy the journey. Let it flow the way yes. that it naturally would. Yes. But our and then when I started anticipating, I already knew where the conversation is going. The most interesting thing happened. I realized you're in control of the conversation at you that are. point, and you know where it's at. So what it allowed me to do was that with some clients, mm-hmm. I didn't even have to start out with the report bill. Right, right. Some people, right. you know, I'd already told you up front. So mm-hmm. part of that communication skills is having the Intelligence just to know, well, hey, we're from one to ten, we're already at step five in this <laughs> right. process. In so some we can cases, skip all that. Yes. And, you know, a lot of people have asked me, you know, what has been the biggest difference maker? You asked me how long I've been in business, and I said 20 years, mm-hmm. right? But then if you was to also ask me, you know, when did you really start to kind of grow? I would say it's been in the past four to five years. Okay. So you know? think about that, right? You've been in business 20 years, right? Mm-hmm. That's a blessing, my brother, to begin with. But Thank then you. really, like you said, that next step, right, that next level, right, mm-hmm. really four to five years ago, okay, mm-hmm. you had to look at your business as a whole and see what's working versus what's not working, exactly. okay? And obviously recognizing how you connect with customers because customers make your business. Exactly. They, they keep, right, they keep food mm-hmm. on the table, mm-hmm. they keep the bills paid. Mm-hmm. But it's also important about how we connect with our customers, the personal touch, understanding, right, where your customers are within that customer journey. Right. And seeing how we can best serve them, Mm -hmm. you know, because you provide a service, Mm -hmm. right, a quality one at that. Mm -hmm. But it's also important for for people in business to understand, Mm -hmm. hey, our customers are everything. Mm -hmm. And the sooner we can make better connections with our customers, they're going to refer other customers as well, Mm -hmm. too. And, you know, and the crazy thing is that we overcomplicate things so much sometimes, and really it's just it's the basics. You know, if you take – and another thing is taking genuine interest. Please. But sometimes it's like, you know, we can get so caught up in, you know, hey, you know, it's the next deal. Mm-hmm. i got to make this amount mm-hmm. of money and da-da-da. But mm-hmm. when you start focusing on what I like to call mastering your craft. Right. And if you've got a love for it, you'll correct – it may take you 20 years. Right. You know what I mean? But right. if you can take the blows, you'll eventually get there. No doubt. And so for now, you know, my goal is to, now that I've seen how it's transformed my business and how it helped opens up more doors, I'm like, if contractors, you know, could 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 get this right mm-hmm. sooner than mm-hmm. I did, mm-hmm. how much is it going to transform sure. their lives? Sure. Not just their business, but in their marriages. Because you cannot learn... Um, you, you, you can't learn all the skills that's required in the communications realm and not go home and apply it Absolutely. to your home life. Absolutely. Or like you said, with your kids. Right. And to me, that's where the real dividends start playing in because, you know, I know where I, you know, my background and where I've came from, mm-hmm. you know, we're not taught that, you know, right. we, we, we just, right. it's, it's just work. You sure. Know what I mean, just, just brute force, mm-hmm. but you're going to fail. You're going to fail in all those areas. So it really, you know, interests me when you see, you know, when I read about your story and the communication, I got some questions Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you. Let's do it. So I want to ask you these and just have you kind of fire off the answers um, as as quickly as you can. All right. Um, First question is, Mm -hmm. what was it that initially sparked your interest in honing in on your communications? I needed to be able to be the best broadcaster, and I wanted to do that. So when I went to go get my master's, that was when I really needed to be able to hone in on my skills. So it was in 2002 that I went to go get my master's, and that was the time when I needed to be able to really lock in. Nice. Can you share a, 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 an amazing story or, or amusing story about miscommunication, you know, how it affected you in your early years? Sure. I definitely felt as though I could uh, out-talk people, and 
I needed to be able to do an internship mm -hmm. at uh, News 12. And I met uh, one of the people at the time uh, who were one of the news directors. And I'm thinking I can just, you know, woo them into being able to get this internship when I just needed to kind of keep things simple, like you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. I ended up playing myself, not, you know, almost not getting the internship if it wasn't for one of my connections being able to speak on my behalf. So I learned there's a time and place for everything. I don't necessarily need to be able to be this individual. I just need to be more of my unique self. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you, that's that's so so key. I think we are in social media and TikTok and mm -hmm. Facebook, and you mm -hmm. see all these influencers. Mm -hmm. I I think as I look back, that's been one of the things that we've gotten right in our business because I knew from a very long time ago that you've got all these other players in my market, right. the other bigger builders that, that can do j exactly what you, sure. you do. So how are you going to stand out? And we knew the video, social media at the time. Like I said, I got started when I was 20, 23, 24 years old. I'm okay. 42 now. Right. And so I've always had been known as the guy, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a marketer who happens to be in the mm -hmm. construction business. Mm -hmm. And so I learned that all these other guys are typically in their 50s. Right. You know, most contractors right. in their 50s. Right. And here I am at 20s getting started. So I leaned into that, meaning like I leaned in to myself, mm -hmm. my brand. How mm -hmm. I didn't... I didn't feel the need to try to go do things the way everybody else did. Right. Now, at first, it was laughter. It was ridicule. Mm -hmm. You know, people, you know, their mascot, mm -hmm. getting the vehicles wrapped sure. and the videos mm -hmm. and, and all that. But I knew just by studying and reading, I knew that process too. I knew that, you know, anybody that, that has an impact, they yes. first start out getting criticized, getting teased, Absolutely. and eventually people see, and they're like, then they start, oh, hmm. wait a minute. Hmm. Then the next step is like, well, hey, you got time where I'd like to pick your brain mm -hmm. about this. And then Absolutely. all of a sudden, you know, now you're finding yourself over here, doing, you've influenced the market, and you start seeing people now, they're wrapping their, hmm. their, their graphics on their vehicle. Hmm. They're doing videos. How and, ironic. You know, so I had the benefit of knowing that way ahead of time. Sure. And so we leaned in on video, you know, almost from, from the get-go. And I tell people, social media, videos being you know client centric making sure that we do everything we can do to be who we say we are right. when it's the hardest time to do that which is when money's on the line mm -hmm. and oftentimes losing money or losing profits for the sake of your name and keeping a reputation right even though it can crush you i knew that if you get through that you've earned it and you're going to grow from it yeah and eventually once you get there nobody can say that you didn't earn it. Absolutely. And so it's just interesting, you know, this conversation, um, like I said a little earlier, having this with you, I got another question for sure. you. Um, what's the first step someone takes, what's the exact first step that someone should take to improve their communication skills to get them from a communication zero to a hero? Be open and honest about yourself. Look at who you are as a person right now. Understand that you may not necessarily have the best communication skills, but remind yourself that if you put the time, energy, and effort into being a better communicator, it starts and ends with you. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. so you gotta you gotta take a long look at yourself in the mirror and basically be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. You know, I tell people sometimes is you know people can they can lie to other people, but you can't lie to yourself. <laughs> and I, I said I, I found a few people that will lie to themselves. Absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> they lie to you and yourself. So uh, next question in terms of active listening, what are the key elements that you think most people overlook? Attitude, attention, and adjustment. Attitude, attention, attention and adjustment. adjustment. Show us what that looks Absolutely. like. Absolutely. So your attitude, it starts with you, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have the right attitude to be able to go in and say, I need to listen because this is purposeful. Mm -hmm. I can learn something. Someone is informing me of something or could be persuading me of something. Mm -hmm. But I have to have the right attitude, the right mindset mm -hmm. in terms of going in and taking in this mm -hmm. conversation. Then, of course... I know that I need to be able to recognize, right, uh, that I have to constantly adjust, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I got to be able to make adjustments. Depends on who we're talking to, right? Mm -hmm. We could be talking to the missus. Mm -hmm. We could be talking to the kids, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So everyone needs to be able to, you got to constantly adjust when you're actually listening to different individuals. And in business, that's reading the rooms. Come on, mm -hmm. okay? You have to be able to walk in and read the room. Mm -hmm. You recognize, like you said, there may have been that customer that doesn't necessarily need steps one through four. They're already at five. Mm -hmm. So you can see, I have to adjust. And sometimes, Ralph, it's literally on the fly, yeah. okay? Last thing is that you gotta give the attention, mm -hmm. right? You gotta give the, you know, the undivided attention mm -hmm. to 
you're a consumer, right? You want the business, you want to be able to maintain good business, that personal touch, right? Mm -hmm. Giving that good eye contact, mm -hmm. obviously giving some good nonverbal contact, I mean, mm -hmm. communication as right. well too, right? Uh, nodding your head, smiling, mm -hmm. right? Acknowledging really the things that you're saying to me because what you're saying to me is important. But those three things right there, attitude, adjustment, and attention, mm -hmm. they go a long way when it comes to active listening. What would you say to someone you, you saw that they had what I refer to as like the poor me attitude, victimhood <laughs> attitude? Can they become a great communicator, a good communicator with that mindset? No, it's going to take time for them, right? Playing the victim, you've already shut down, right, mm -hmm. and put a wall up. Okay, now I've got to do some construction. And I've got to be able to tear down that wall. And I have to be able to restore that confidence in you to ensure that you can obviously understand the importance of why we need to have impactful communication, mm -hmm. especially in your line of business. Nice. How important is note taking whenever you're communicating? Big time, right? And guess what we have the luxury of using now? Mm -hmm. Our phones. Yep. Okay. You don't necessarily need to have the notepad in your hand. You can record mm -hmm. conversations, right? Obviously with people understanding that, but then you can also use AI mm -hmm. as well too, which is also a game changer. Mm -hmm. uh, when, totally. When you're, you know, when you're on calls or conferences, right? You can use things that can obviously make, uh, take notes, but being able to look back at those things and seeing the steps that you need to be able to improve upon is only going to benefit you in the long run. What's the biggest return on investment you've gotten from have, it, have developed uh, the skill set to, to have really great communication? I would definitely say that it's been not just being able to be the motivational speaker, but uh, being the expert, being an understand a person who is invested mm -hmm. in this because communication is constantly changing. You know, at one point we had rotary phones mm -hmm. where you could put your, right, and then roll it around. Then we had the cordless phone. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now we have smartphones, a computer in your hand. Mm -hmm. And so as we evolve, as you know, as technology evolves, we have to evolve as communicators as well, too. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly learning how to be able to grow and develop our communication skills so that we understand the importance of why we need to communicate in the first place. You know what I've realized um, and it, it thought just popped in my mind as mm -hmm. you were talking about that. It's. It really blew me away when I realized that once you get great at this skill set, you have superhuman capabilities. No doubt. And what I mean by that is that I've always heard, I've always been told, you know, that no one can predict the future. Mm -hmm. I believe that's a lie. Mm -hmm. I believe and I've witnessed and experienced myself okay. where when someone who's great at communication is great at their craft sure. and they know their craft inside and out, mm -hmm. They can predict the future. They can go into a meeting. They can go into a room, right. role play ahead of time, mm -hmm. anticipate the questions, already know the answers sure. to it. And, of course, you're going to have so, a few that, that, that you don't anticipate. But when you're really great at it, you already know the outcome within an 80 to a 90% degree of accuracy. Right. And, and once you get to that level in communication and being able to do that, that's where – magic happens mm -hmm. and that's where you or me or anyone who does this starts to have more control over their life and Absolutely. I see so many people that are struggling in their lives or their professions or mm -hmm. their relationships or whatnot right. but the key to that is I've seen other people too who are who are so great at it that they totally bomb it because they don't they're not willing to invest no. in the process no so you, you still got to you still gotta have. You still you gotta do. listen. You do. You still gotta be wait. You still gotta be patient. You still you can't go there and think that just because you know that process, right. you try to rush the process. It's a great point because you don't want to get complacent, mm -hmm. right? You never want to get comfortable. Mm -hmm. You constantly want to be able to learn and be open to learning. Mm -hmm. There are some things that people have been doing for years, Ralph. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand that you know the process inside and out, but there's always something for you to be able to learn. And when it comes to being able to communicate mm -hmm. and to connect with people, that's a constant learning process, mm -hmm. okay? We communicate a certain way now. You have to communicate a certain way now. And if you don't, then you're lost in the sauce. Mm -hmm. What do you think the dangers of... If, if there's always good and there's bad to everything. Mm -hmm. So if someone was to ask you, you know, if you, you're 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 training a mentee, right? Right. What is the downside when you're dealing with someone who's an excellent communicator? Well, sometimes I know that I may not necessarily need to use the tricks in the bag. Mm -hmm. I just need to be able to 
you know, strengthen the skills that they already have and enhance those, you know, so that they can they can continue to maintain mm -hmm. and be the, the good communicator that they need to be. It's one thing for you to deal with a communicator who's struggling, right? That's mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. But the effective communicator, you just want to be able to keep them to be able to maintain what they're doing mm -hmm. and so that they are efficient in mm -hmm. getting across to people the way that they intend to. One of the things that I know that, you know, when in, I'm referring to, I'm thinking of sales, mm -hmm. right? When, mm -hmm. when I, we, we can interchange you know, interchange those words, sure. a great salesperson, a right. great communicator and all that, is that once you get really good in those areas, you you have to have a strong sense of moral compass you do. and ethics. You do. Speak to me about that. Because first and foremost, mm -hmm. you've got to be hungry and humble, mm -hmm. right? Nothing is, is guaranteed. So you obviously need to be able to recognize when you're in a business, you want to be able to continue to remain humble and appreciative of everything that comes your way. Because mm -hmm. the blessings that do come are because of the hard work, are because of the attention to detail, right? Mm -hmm. Because you are the active listener mm -hmm. and you're paying attention to the things that your consumer wants. But you also need to be able to make sure that you stand on your morals. Mm -hmm. You're an individual who is about, you know, who, who's about being able to provide a quality service. Because mm -hmm. if the shoe is only in the foot, you want someone to be able to do that for you. Mm -hmm. And it's necessary for businesses to be able to have that, especially with their sales teams, so mm -hmm. that they have a really clear understanding and everyone is on the same page. It's, it's, it's consistent, mm -hmm. right? Part of being the effective communicator is being consistent. Mm -hmm. You never want to be able to come across like you're a know-it-all. Yeah. Right. Right. That's that's not good for business. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you constantly have to be able to look at how your business is and what the consumer mm -hmm. is looking for as well, too. But what are some tips to to combat that? Like if you were mentoring someone that mm -hmm. possibly came across as being that as you observed them, what, right. would, what would you tell them? Well, we're going to have a come to Jesus talk. Mm -hmm. We're going to take it. You know, we're, I'm going to have to give them some tough love mm -hmm. and have them to be able to recognize, hey, you are in a position to be able to impact people, mm -hmm. okay? So your influence needs to come from you. You need to be able to look, take some stock in yourself mm -hmm. and then realize we need to be able to kind of change the conversation. Mm -hmm. It needs to be more of a conversation and not of a sales pitch, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to be genuine. I want to be able to come across as being... Uh, Friendly, but I'm also very mindful of what we need to be able to discuss so that we can do what's best for the customer. Give an example um, of tonality. You mentioned it kind of early on when we first started talking, mm -hmm. and I know all of us know the term. I think it's like, I mean, what you say, but how you say it. Yes. Um, and in communication and sales and mm -hmm. business and all other areas, that plays such a significant role. Sure. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Like when you when you're mentoring someone like that, mm -hmm. um, how do you go about getting them to understand what that means in a practical sense? Yeah. So anytime I work with someone who I'm, I'm mentoring, I want them to be able to recognize the impact that they can have on on others, mm -hmm. because the things that we say can also affect others as well too. Mm -hmm. I'm African American. I can be on the phone. And you wouldn't know that I'm African American, mm -hmm. okay, because of the way that I'm projecting myself. Mm -hmm. I also recognize as well, too, that if I'm teaching someone, we have to do the basics, right? You've got mm -hmm. to be able to come across and be very mindful of the conversation that you're having, right? So you want to be sensitive to individuals mm -hmm. and how, especially because of how you receive them. Energy is also another big thing. Mm -hmm. The energy that you receive with someone is also going to play a role in how you communicate. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you want to pace yourself. Mm -hmm. You never want to get too far ahead in terms of the conversation. See how the conversation is going to play out. Mm -hmm. And then realize, okay, there may be some adjustments that I have to make along the way. Mm -hmm. And if you are able to do that, then, yes, there could be a recipe for success. Now, so I want to switch gears for a moment. Sure. I noticed uh, you know, public speaking. What is some of the tricks of the trade to get good at that? If, if I've never done a public speaking gig, right? Okay. And I was came to you and I would say, hey, you know, I've I found myself in a position where I have to do this. I've right. never done it. Right. But I wanna I wanna when I do it, I wanna do it as if I've done it a hundred times. Sure. How do you go 
and do that effectively? Absolutely. First thing I'm going to tell you is, is that we need to know who your audience is. So we have to do an audience analysis. Okay. Got to know the group that you're speaking to, right? Mm -hmm. Is it a group of 100? Is it a group of 1,000, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to then look at the three Ps, mm -hmm. preparation, planning, and then practice. Let's figure out what the message has to be, especially if you know what the theme of, of the discussion is going mm -hmm. to be about. Then secondly, we're going to put together a plan, mm -hmm. right? we got to be able to plan this thing. Mm -hmm. And then structure it accordingly where you can maybe infuse some humor mm -hmm. as long as we're funny. Mm -hmm. We can have some, right? So we can have some tough questions in there depending upon the group that we're speaking to. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we got to be able to practice this thing. So we could, in essence, go into a space where you can uh, feel out how the technology works. Does the microphone work? Because Murphy's Law can happen. It's going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those are the things that I would want for someone to be able to understand because at the end of the day, you have one time to be able to make the impact that you need to. And it's all about owning your words. When you walk into that room, Ralph, mm -hmm. it's showtime. Mm -hmm. The lights are on, all eyes on you, mm -hmm. right? But you want to be able to say, it's time for you to be able to take in this message and they're all ears. Do you still, when you're doing that, do you resort back at any time where you face some of the same anxiety, like maybe the first time you did it? Absolutely. What are, you, what are your tricks to snap out of that? Absolutely. So I do a couple of breathing techniques, and it's something that I'm very, very adamant on because your breathing dictates how you talk, mm -hmm. okay? Most people who suffer from speech anxiety, palms get sweaty. They start tapping their foot, right? Mm -hmm heart rate, right, is going a mile a minute. Mm -hmm. And so your breathing will help to calm you and put you in a position to be able to have some, some positive nervousness, mm -hmm. which will then afford us a chance to be able to then lock into the message. One thing I've always realized when I catch myself being anxious, being nervous about something, it's a sign. Mm -hmm. It's a sign and you got to recognize the sign. Yes. And it, what I've learned to do is it's like, i got to get better at this. That's the, uh, bottom line. I, I got to get better. Bottom at this. line. Like, I got to. I got to do more work. Right. I got to spend more time. I got to get when I'm in this element. I got to become comfortable with mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of us, for the in all industries, we've just got to a point where we don't want to do the work. And that's that, and that's the issue. The basics. Right. The right. That. The basics. Right. Mm -hmm. You get complacent. Right. The business is successful. Okay. We can take the businesses to the next level. No one's comfortable being just successful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. You want to be able to say to yourself, okay, I've gotten to this point. Mm -hmm. Why can't I, why can't I, why can't that be me? I, I can take it here. Mm -hmm. Why not you and why not now? Mm -hmm. So we have access to all of this technology, mm -hmm. all these videos. Mm -hmm. You can take courses mm -hmm. online where you can learn how to be able to hone your skills. Everything is literally at a touch of a button. Mm -hmm. It just ultimately falls on us whether or not we actually want to put the time, energy, and effort. Exactly. Into being a one learn. of the things that I, I analyze with my people, my people mean like either a vendor or a subcontractor, right. even, even employees when we bring them on, here's a cheat sheet for anybody that's listening. All you got to do with anybody is watch them and see if they do the basics. Please. Painters, use a good example. Mm -hmm. There's always preliminary things that everyone have to do before they start doing the right. thing that they do. Right. And you can judge. You know, say so you can't. Well, you can judge people. You can judge them based on did they show up prepared. Mm -hmm. You know, when that painter starts to paint this particular job, right? Did he bring the strainers with him to strain the paint so yeah. he don't get trash in the paint? Yeah. You know, do they clean before they start? You know, so in business, if I was going to be mentoring someone, mm -hmm. it'd be those type of things. Like, here's the cheat sheet to find the right people the quickest and fastest way. It's okay to judge people when you know the industry. Well, here's right. the thing. When you're looking at a plumber, when you're looking at a at a painter, mm -hmm. when you go walk their job, here's two areas you go check. It'll tell you who you're dealing with right, within five right. minutes. You know what those areas are? You walk, you look at their trim work. Get a ladder. If you're short like me, you may have to use your phone or, you know, but you turn your phone on, turn your okay. camera on. Okay. And you scan the tops of the door cases, mm. the bottoms of the window cases. Okay. The industry norm is where well, you know people's watching who's in construction. The comments is going to be. Nobody does that. Da, da. You're right. I'm just saying for what we look for. Sure. And once I find <clears throat> a painter that does that mm -hmm. without me having a problem, that lets me know they're already above par. Right. That gives them more leverage 
to Absolutely. negotiate price. Absolutely. That gives them a lot of other advantages. And mm-hmm. I've realized that in almost every industry, there are things like that. Yes. And so, you know, even with communication, I'm pretty sure, you know, that there's telltale signs when you see someone, you can, he's already, he's already, he's already there. Of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You walk in, you know, this person mm-hmm. knows their stuff. Mm-hmm. They've taken the time to be able to do what they need to be able to do to ensure that this is a really positive experience, mm-hmm. right? Getting work done, that requires money. Mm-hmm. Money's a stressor. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you want to be able to ensure that the person who is investing is, this is definitely something that is going to be able to impact them mm-hmm. long after the work is done. Mm-hmm. And you've got to be able to come across that from the, from the initial mm-hmm. consultation to mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the before and after. Yeah, and uh, you know, the bottom line is that our success is dependent on how well we're able to articulate Hello. and communicate value Hello. and sell ourselves. Yes, sir. And so I would, you know, I would tell anybody that's listening, master communications. Please. Study it day and night, and it's going to be one of the biggest things that gives you the biggest rewards of your career. Communications is a life skill, folks. Mm -hmm. Please understand the importance of it because it can serve so many different aspects of our lives. Mm -hmm. It's on us to be better. Yeah. Got another question for you. What would you say is a common myth about body language that you would like to debunk? Sure. So the RBF, right? The RBF is the, you know, resting face. Mm -hmm. And some people come across as, you know, being very cold or very stern. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're not willing to be able to communicate. Mm -hmm. We can't necessarily place judgments or misconceptions on people. Mm -hmm. We just have to be able to view them for who they are. Mm -hmm. Once they actually open up to you and are willing to be able to have a conversation, that's when Mm -hmm. we can actually start to be able to make the connection. I was with a client one time, and we had a tough situation we were having to deal with with one of our vendors or subcontractors. Right. We had the client here, I'm here, partners there, and our uh, subcontractor was there. It was, a, it was, it was something about, um, I think it was like 10000 our discrepancy on some selections or something. Okay. And I found it very interesting. Most of the people that we build for, they're building, you know, the higher-end custom homes, so you're dealing with a different demographic right. of person. Right. They know these types of things that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And I've learned a lot from them. And one of the things I learned in that meeting was that before we even got started, like we came, we sat down like what we were doing here, we were getting ready to get started. Right. And my client, who happened to be an attorney, he said, <laughs> whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. They, everybody knew each other. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to say any names. He said, but hey, um, how about them crossing your arms for me? And he's like, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm good. He's like, no. Nah. I said, because when mm-hmm. you've got your arms crossed, that mm-hmm. means you're not willing to mm-hmm. negotiate. Yes. And that stuck with me, and the person, he, he, he's like, you're right. Mm-hmm. You know, and he uncrossed his arms, and mm-hmm. you know. but it was just amazing to see that in live action with the real situation where yes. tens of thousands of dollars were on the line. And he didn't do it in a mean way. He just did it in a matter-of-fact way right. and called it out for what it was. And that was just so amazing and how it set the tone for that meeting. Sure, sure. Yeah, body language can really dictate how we actually connect with people, Mm -hmm. right? So the crossing of the arms is is an indicator that I don't want to communicate. But we also have other ways as well, too, right, Mm -hmm. where people are not looking at you directly. Mm -hmm. And in some cultures, that's a big deal, Mm -hmm. right? Eye contact is not necessarily something that is accepted like it is here Mm -hmm. uh, with, you know, people in the United States. But it's also how we view the person, right? Mm-hmm. So depending upon how you're sitting in your seat, your posture also has a lot mm-hmm. to do with that, folks, mm-hmm. right? If you're slumped down in the seat, mm-hmm. I'm not really as interested, right? I tell this to my students all the mm-hmm. time, Ralph, but it's important for us to be able to pick up on those things mm-hmm. so that, once again, that's, that goes back, Ralph, to reading the room. And that's your success or failure because in business, in life, or whatnot, you're in situations you're going to be the victim because you you don't know how to read the circumstances. You're not getting the verbal cues. Yes, you're not sir. getting the physical cues. And then you're trying to get your way. You don't even know how to get your way. You're, yes, you're sir. missing all. And I was that guy. Mm-hmm. I was that guy I quite a few that. times. And so I've studied, I've learned, you know, things from audiobooks, mm-hmm. videos, past clients. Even I learned from anybody and everybody. And right. I, I know that part of our success has been getting above average. I still got a long ways to go. Sometimes, you know, I'll be pulled in so many different directions mm-hmm. and I catch myself still reverb. I'm like, I know better than that. Absolutely. I'm mistake you. They were sitting there and telling me exactly with their body language that they weren't in it. Mm-hmm. But it takes intentional focus. You can't have 
be double minded in those scenarios. You have to put intentional effort on that. It definitely does. And to take it a step further, it's always good for companies and corporations like yours to be able to bring in consultants, people who are experts in the field, mm -hmm. who do specialized trainings, especially in your line of work, so that you keep the focus on the consumer, mm -hmm. right? Your company is contingent upon your success with your consumers. Mm -hmm. So why not continue to make that investment? That's just what it boils down to. You know, and I, I want to share something with the audience here. It's one thing that I've learned firsthand that has paid really huge dividends mm -hmm. is when you get great at this and you know your craft and you're talking with someone, we're talking about a business deal or we're right. having casual conversations, building rapport. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, and I know you do this quite often, um, you know what the person is thinking. Absolutely. And you do it in a way to where you're, you know what I mean? You're yes. Saying, well, hey, and, and you know, it's not like what you're thinking, <laughs> but it's like this and that. And right. the more you do that, the confidence level mm -hmm. of the person, they're like, well, how did he know that? Right. He must be an ex. He's literally reading my mind. Mm -hmm. And what I found is that as you, when you start getting to those levels, sure. you can almost write your own paycheck yes, at sir. that point. Because yes, a lot of people, especially depending on what industry you're in, mm -hmm. They will pay top to dollar, top dollar, top dollar to know that they're dealing with someone who is at the top of their craft. Yes. and they don't have to worry with it. If there is the issue, they've already thought about how. How are you going to think of it? You've never done this before. Mm -hmm. You've done it for twenty years, mm -hmm. and they know your concerns. They know your even before you say it. Yes, sir. But imagine someone trying to compete with someone. Now you're a contractor. How are you going to compete with that? Not possible. You know, it's not possible. You have to have a passion, a willingness to learn that before you even have a chance. Absolutely. So for me. You know, the work ethic has kind of set us apart. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nobody's going to outwork me in this. You know, I, hear I love you. it. Right. And but if I was to see a young person or someone that was coming up in the industry, just sure. like I'm like, that guy's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, what is some of the things you would say that even the seasoned professionals? Is, uh, what are they getting? What do they? What do you often see when see them doing wrong or still getting wrong? Yeah, it it definitely you know it, it's sometimes. Uh, you know, triggers things. Like I could see someone giving a, a message or, in, you know, interacting with people. I'm really big in terms of observing mm -hmm. and not necessarily having to say anything, right? Just paying attention, watching individuals and how they connect with people. I always look at some of the greatest speakers of our time, mm -hmm. right? Mahatma Gandhi, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., right? Uh, and even some, just some current, you know, people, John Maxwell, mm -hmm. right? Eric Thomas, right? Jeremy Anderson. These people come in and they own it, right? From start to finish. But I'm constantly just looking at their technique, mm -hmm. you know, how they connect, what sort of humor they're using, right? Because mm -hmm. once again, different situations call for different things. And it's no different in business. Mm -hmm. If you have a business that's working, there are some things that always need to be able to be tweaked, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Business never stays the same. Nope. It's constantly changing. Constantly Ralph. changing. Yes, yep. sir. In your view, what's more powerful in communication, sure. verbal or nonverbal cues? Nonverbal. It's more it, important. Believe it or not, yes, 70% okay. of our communication is nonverbal. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to look at how people are connecting with us. Mm -hmm. Are they totally locked in? You can tell sometimes in some cases where the light's on, Ralph, mm -hmm. and nobody's home, mm -hmm. okay? So mm -hmm. you want to be able to gauge and kind of feel the temperature of the person that you're connecting with mm -hmm. because it tells you the difference between how in tune you are with that person mm -hmm. or if it's just about the sale, mm -hmm. okay? Right. All right? Transactional That's or yes relationship yes that's you what, have to build it. relationships mm -hmm. you have to do that in business mm -hmm. okay your calling card is the work that you do mm -hmm. but it's also the time that you invest mm -hmm. in the personal touch with the consumer amen how does one effectively read and respond to a nonverbal cue in a conversation well you hope that they're actually going to be paying attention they're giving you their undivided attention mm -hmm. social cues happen, right? We can give nonverbal cues. Mm -hmm. If I'm nodding my head, that means I'm understanding. Mm -hmm. If I'm smiling, that means I'm locked in, mm -hmm. right? I could look away for a moment and then come back and I might just need a breather just to be able to kind of take a break from the conversation. But then, you know, you recognize, hey, once again, I'm making the eye contact, I'm nodding my head, and like what, what you're doing right now, right? I'm locked in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes giving someone a listener's lean, mm -hmm. moving forward, 
tells a person, mm -hmm. I'm interested in what you're having to say. Mm -hmm. Those things go a long way when it comes to effective communication. You know, one of the things I found to be most interesting out of all the things I've learned. What's that? that? It sticks with me when some, like, you can you can view all this, right? Right. Okay, hold on. Well, you, I just gave it away. I just gave it away. <laughs> but I've learned that the where a person's feet is pointed, big time, is one of the biggest big tells, time because they you, you know. And so I, I've been in deals where I've talked with people, and you know we've gotten comfortable with building rapport. It ain't like this sometimes. Sometimes right. it's it's right. like you this, right. You question it right. You know. And if their feet's pointed that way. I know I got to tighten. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got to grab the attention. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, you, you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I've seen the difference of when I didn't know that, mm -hmm. and then when I did know that, how you're able to rego regain control sure. if you're able to recognize it. Right. So I just believe that this skill set we're talking about is so important. I wanted to have a conversation with you because I know you've got a lot of experience with it, and I'd like to talk more about the public speaking because I feel like at some point in time I'm going to be doing you are Ralph. more of that. You and, are. Um, I just never thought that in business, it, it, the season that I'm in right now, I thought that you know we were just in construction. Oh, you know, you just building. But it's so much more than that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I tell people now, that's I'm finding out that's the easiest part about what we do. Right. You know. Right. So a few more questions for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about role playing. Okay. How does role playing uh, exercises contribute to developing communication skills? It's a fantastic activity for individuals to be able to hone their skills. Mm -hmm. Role playing allows people to be able to take a role and invest in that role and allows them to be able to see the dynamic between mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. right? And what that can do is, is that it can also open up to another discussion. Once individuals actually take on their role, you can see how other people are reacting. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. To certain situations. And that also adds to the dynamic in terms of how we're going to communicate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Role playing is a great, great way for individuals to be able to be better communicators because I'm looking at things from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perspectives also play a role in that as well, too. Mm -hmm. We want individuals to be able to understand each other better. Right. Sometimes being able to do role playing, mm -hmm. it's really a game changer. You know, I've realized that in our business, how important that is. And I've got my, my daughter comes to mind. Um, I don't remember exactly what the conversation was about, but it, mm -hmm. I, I had her. I said, hey, she couldn't she couldn't see the next step. You know, she's she's never done it. You know, right. She's like, well, I don't know. That's, I said, no, no, don't say that. Right. Watch this. Put yourself in the other person's mm -hmm. shoes. Mm -hmm. It's your money. Mm -hmm. It's your home. It's your building. It's your project. Sure. And someone just said to you what you just said. What would be your response? How long is it going to take? Hello. And she started naming off. I said, that's all, that's exactly. I said, watch what I tell you. Right. When we go in this meeting. Right. Watch and take note of exactly how that goes. I said, so what I'm teaching you, what I'm showing you, is that if you take the time to see the other person's perspective, mm -hmm. normally we're going to all wear the same. Right. You know, right. We all want to look out for our self-interest right. when it comes to negotiating. Mm -hmm. I said, but you're 20 years old now, and in a year's time when you're putting intentional effort and stuff yes. like this, your first marker against you is going to be your youth. Mm -hmm. You're young. Mm -hmm. That's normally tied with inexperience. Right. People want to devalue you. Just for the simple fact of I want to deal with someone who's experienced. Right. You take this, you get great at that, you go in a meeting, mm -hmm. and you're able to sit down and talk with someone who's 50 years old, who's been there four or five times, and know that they're going to want to devalue. Right. And you'd be fine with that. You wait for your opportunity. And then when you start speaking, you're speaking yes, from sir. the lens of I know where this yes, conversation is going. I said, that's how you get the credibility. That's how you get the respect. And being able to get someone from a perspective of, well, there's no way I'm not going to ever know that. Mm -hmm. So role playing in our company is one of the things that we lean on a lot before we go to meetings, before right. we meet with someone. And right. Sometimes I can't role play with other people. Mm -hmm. So I role play with myself. Right. You know, <laughs> before I come to hey, let me, let me figure out where <laughs> this conversation right. could go. Right. So I'm not getting surprised because you know what? Sure. Going in unprepared like that, and I know you know this, mm -hmm will literally make or break a deal. No doubt. Every single time. Yes, sir. So what are some of the um what is some of the tips or tricks that you would share with someone when doing role playing 
you know, to kind of help them if they're just getting started. Be open to the process, right? Know mm -hmm. that you're going to be able to actually learn something from this. Mm -hmm. Know that when you actually go into this, there's going to be uh, an understanding that you're going to need to be able to have. But the conversation is going to be intentional, right? We have to have reciprocal effort here, mm -hmm. right? So I'm putting forth something. You got to be able to give something back, mm -hmm. back and forth. We have to be understanding of one another when we're connecting with each other and be open to the idea of taking in different perspectives as we're communicating. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite go-to technique for calming nerves before speaking or, 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 or big presentation? Sure. So I usually just close my eyes and I would take in three really deep breaths. And that would allow me to be able to kind of calm my nerves before I go into a big speaking engagement. I know that I'm nervous uh, because I definitely don't want to be able to, I, I don't want to come across as someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. I want to be my true confident self. I can do that by coming in, closing my eyes, being in a quiet space and just taking in three deep breaths, holding each breath mm -hmm. and then exhaling and then I'm ready to be able to roll. So you're in a room, say, with uh, a thousand people. Mm -hmm. And um, do you hone in on one person to calm those near nerves while you're speaking with someone? Do you I just look at a couple of people, actually. So that was, I look, so, yep, I look at a couple of people. Yep, I can key in on a couple of people. And once I get this, mm -hmm. and once I get this, mm -hmm. then I know I got them. You know what? And it's so interesting you just did that. That's what I, I found it when you're in situations like that. The breathing technique you've mentioned, right. resetting your your Absolutely. state, yes, and smiling, and then for me it's like taking a moment to be grateful. Mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. this is what I prayed for. This yes, is, and now I'm here. Yes, all right, it's game time. Let's yes, do it. Yes, you know? and I think that it's we, we overcomplicate stuff. We do way more than what we do. <laughs> we do, and I think you know for people that are watching you, I found that it's just really that simple. But you know. Besides, but you have to have done the work. No I doubt. Preference it by that. Yes. You have to have done the work. You have to be prepared. You got to be ready. Mm -hmm. um, can you share a tip for remembering people's names and details uh, when you first meet? This is the area where I struggle, by sure. the way. Sure. So, first and last names have letters at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. So, your name is Ralph, right? Mm -hmm. Raphael, right? It starts with an R, mm -hmm. right? I know I can look at you and say, that's Ralph, because mm -hmm. I know the R, right? Mm -hmm. But I also want people to understand you have to just kind of continue to keep asking in a certain way, but it be subtle. Mm -hmm. You can say, hey, my name is Raphael. Nice to meet you. Cool. That may not have registered with me. Mm -hmm. But then once again, hey, can you mention that one more time? You'd be like, yeah, I can do that for you. Yeah, my name is Ralph. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes we just have to be capable of being able to say, hmm, I got to hear that one more time. Or I know that, uh, you know, Ralph has a goatee, mm -hmm. right? So he doesn't have a mustache, but I got to be able to make the connection. Ralph has brown eyes, okay, mm -hmm. for our listeners, right? Mm -hmm. So he's got brown eyes, he's got a goatee, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. He's got two moles here, mm -hmm. okay? Those are things that I can connect with and say. Physical okay. characteristics. Yes, I know who. Association. Yes, I know who Ralph is. Gotcha. Okay? So when I see you again, I'll be like, hey, my man, what's going on, Ralph? Yeah. <laughs> empathy. What mm. role, how big of a role does empathy play in becoming oh, a great man. communicator? Ralph, let me tell you something. When it comes down to it, if you don't recognize that you need to be able to be an understanding and compassionate person when it comes to communicating, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you're coming across with. People are just not generally going to make the connection with you. Mm -hmm. Energy is such a big deal with communicating, Ralph. I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations with people and they don't come across as being empathetic, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. There's a certain purpose for why they're speaking, right? It should be genuine and it, could, it should come across as being authentic. Mm -hmm. We have to be empathetic individuals when we're communicating. Mm -hmm. You know, just, hey, how's your day going? Yep. I'm sorry to hear about the loss of, you know, maybe your dog. Or, you know, I know you kind of fallen on some hard times and I'm really sorry to be able to hear that. Mm -hmm. Those things, there's empathetic communication that people don't realize as well mm -hmm. too. It's a, it's a support 
that we need to be able to come across to people. Mm-hmm. Say, for instance, you didn't get the deal. It's okay. I understand, right? But what can we do to be able to make this better so that we can lock down a deal? We can we can close this deal this time. Those things go a long way in terms of how we are as people mm-hmm. and as communicators. One of the areas that I had failed uh, is is has been in that area. Sometimes I still will if I get too caught up in, in everything that I've got going on. But mm. I found that that makes the biggest difference. It in does. Business. Um, I don't know if it's in every business, but I know from my experience in construction, mm-hmm. you've got we've got thirty or forty different uh, tradespeople that we work with on any given day. Sure, you got sure. Vendors and, and we're all so busy. You know, <clears throat> if it ain't with the phones, it's mm-hmm. with our business, our life, whatever. And I found when you genuinely take interest in people on the job sites, or you know, walking up to them, hey man, how's it going? All right, mm-hmm. cool. you know, is everything good? Mm-hmm. Anything we need to do better? Anything? Sure. Anything you want to voice your opinion on? All right. right. Well, you know, how's the wife? How's the kids? And actually taking an interest in the individual. Yes. And um, a lot of times people think we got to do all this other stuff to make, you know, to make connections with your team or have your team to have buy-in or whatnot. It's really coming down to just genuinely taking interest in them. Yes, going back to the basics, keeping things simple. Mm-hmm. Okay, I tell my students all the time, the acronym KISS, mm-hmm. keep it simple, stupid. Right. Okay, you want to just be Keep it, you know, keep it simple. When you are, you know, communicating with, uh, you know, painters or or uh, plumbers, right? You know, you want to be able to come across as as a person. I know that hey, you work just as hard as I do, mm-hmm. okay? But it's not just about the deal; it's about the individual. Mm-hmm. And so I need to be able to ensure, hey, my man, how's it going? Mm-hmm. Right? I know you're at your kid's soccer game. How did how did you do last week? Mm-hmm. Right? Or or Hey, you know, I'm getting married in a couple of months. You know, how are we holding up? We've, you know, we're, we're almost there at the finish line. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm very happy for you, right? Those things go a long way. Mm-hmm. Taking a couple of minutes just to be able to see how a person is doing means a lot. Yeah. And the next question kind of ties into that about, you know, how do you feel the digital age has changed the way we need to approach mm-hmm. like that type of situation? Yeah. Instead of just saying, hey, let me shoot you a text. Mm-hmm. Let me give you a phone call. Okay, let me FaceTime with you. Mm-hmm. Okay, I may not be able to physically be in the same room with you, but I can FaceTime with you. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that that shows that you genuinely do care mm-hmm. about the person. It's not just about the deal. Mm-hmm. It's always about the individual. Mm-hmm. So that's a cheat sheet that I use, a cheat code that I use. And what I've started doing is is um, we got a situation that Mark and I was talking about. There's someone we're wanting to do a podcast with and okay. do this other stuff with. And, right. You know, we could, we could hop on Zoom. Easily. Boom. Be 30 minutes. You ain't got to fly nowhere. You ain't got to. No, but sir. you know what? We pack in our bags. We go in it because you, you you can't replace that face-to-face, oh, that no, connection. No. Even after the podcast, no. just the networking right. and whatnot. And so for anyone that's watching, or always, if you can afford it, if you can, opt with the personal connection, especially in today's world. Yes, sir. Because it's so easy for us just to, boom, shoot your text, mm-hmm. shoot a video. But there's no way you're going to stand out. No. There's no way you're going to no. build that kind of rapport. Yes. And so you get, I believe you get the biggest return on your investment, especially from a business stance when you're trying to build that rapport with someone. Absolutely. To, you know, foot, pay the plane ticket, you know, go drive the three hours, go speak with the person, go to lunch, Definitely. break bread with them. And, yes. You know, and that's where you, when you, when you do get, when that person do see your phone call coming across, oh, what's oh up? yeah. Happening? Oh yeah. Da, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah. So to me, that's been something that, um, that's been a definite game changer for us. I think we've got one or two more questions, okay. and then I'll, I'll see what questions you got from us. So, and this one, want to have a little fun. If you could have, if you could hold a conversation with any historical figure, who would it be, and why? Wow, that's a great question. Probably say Barack Obama. What questions would you ask? Oh man, he's a big sports fan, yeah. and I definitely would love to be able to get get his take on the on the playoffs, NFL playoffs. Would love to be able to know what his thoughts were. He's also a big basketball fan as well too. What his thoughts were on uh, the in season tournament that you know that took place not too long ago. But then I would also want to be able to ask him how does he see our society, you know, as a whole. Mm-hmm. You know, what are really the biggest needs for our students, for our children, mm-hmm. and how can we generally be, you know, the the country that everyone you know in most cases views us as. Right. You know, what What do we need to be to be a solid nation? Mm-hmm. 
you know, because obviously he's been in a position as the leader of the free world at one point, and, you know, he would probably have a lot to say on those things. I definitely would want to be able to, to ask him those questions for sure. I know for me, I'd probably ask him if he, if he could tell me some of the, the top secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I already know the answer to right, that. Right, yeah. right, right. So uh, what questions do you uh, do you have, have for me? Or 20 years in business, mm -hmm. you look back at this mm -hmm. from where you are, you know, from where you were to where you are now. What advice would you give to anyone who wants to be an entrepreneur? I would, I would say choose something that you're going to stay committed to. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. Starting over is hard. Right. I see people, they go do this for a little bit of time, right. and then it ain't end up what they thought it was. Then mm -hmm. they go over here and try to do that. And before you know it, that becomes a habitual habit. And so... I, I, I used to probably would have said, you know, choose something you're passionate about, that old cliche or whatnot. Mm -hmm. My experience is I learned to become passionate about what I was dedicated to. It wasn't always there. Okay. But also as I've grown as a man, as a husband, as a father, and just my background and being a foster child, and I take immense pride in when I give someone my word, right. they can count on it. Okay. And in today's world, that's so rare sure. where if you've only got that one quality, mm -hmm. you will instantly stand out above everybody else. Right. So if someone wanted to be an entrepreneur, I would say think long, mm -hmm. not too long. Mm -hmm. Decide what it is that you're going to do, mm. even when it's hard, even okay. when you hate it, right. even when you don't even want to get up and face it. Right. You have that conviction where you're going to get up, you're going to put your boots on, you're going to do it, and you're going to keep doing it, and you're going to keep doing it until you master that. Right. And hopefully it won't take you 20 years like it did me. Find you a mentor mm. who's already done that mm. thing that you're committed to. Okay. Pay them. Don't go asking for no favors. They right. don't owe you anything. Right. And here's if you ain't got the money, volunteer to work for them for free. Sure. And say, only thing I require that. is that you show me everything. I'll tote your bags. I don't know how to cook, but I even learn how to cook your dinner if that's what it takes. <laughs> right. and a lot of people in today's world, they frown upon that work mm -hmm. ethic like that. Mm -hmm. But that would be the advice I would give anyone who wanted to become and know that it's not going to happen overnight. You may need to work a second job. You can't start out as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur mm -hmm. and replace your income. Most of us can't. Right. So know that you're going to have to work long hours. Sure. You do that during the day. Go work at Walmart at night right. you know, and make that and know your numbers. Mm -hmm. Know what it takes for you to sustain the lifestyle that you're in to pay your light bill. Keep it minimum. Right. And already become okay that it's going to take me five years. And I'm okay with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? I'm going to enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. Have a vision for what it's going to look like when you get there. Right. So that way when you're in the middle of it, you get discouraged. And then have a plan. You know, plans change. They do. Right? Mm -hmm. But at least when you've got a plan and when you fail and when you, you face those days to where you just want to give up and you want to quit... You go back and you look at that and you see what progress you've made. Gotcha. And that often will give you the motivation, in my opinion, and in my experience, to keep going for it. Okay. I have one other question. Mm -hmm. How do you separate business from family? That's an interesting question. I don't. In my in and out, I know that's a lot of people, there's a all kind of views on it. What works for me is mm -hmm. I knew that there was going to be a divide. Okay. Out of the gate. And I chose to make an intentional effort and a plan. My wife, one of my first goals was to have them get to a point where I could pay my wife to come work mm -hmm. with me and, mm -hmm. and, and to be my partner in right. the business. And when, from the very from the very beginning, it has always been a struggle, and it has continued to be a struggle up until probably the past three years. But I put my wife in a seat to where she sees the finances. Sure. She knows what we're looking at. Smart man. You know what I mean? So right. she knows where we're at at all times. Mm -hmm. She's looking out for our best interest. So you make strategic, you know, make strategic moves like that, or that's what I did. But I wanted I wanted my business and my family and it not to compete right. with me. And, it, and the way I was doing it at one point in time, that's exactly what it was. And that's where a lot of us struggle, mm -hmm. especially, you know, when you're driven. Right. It, 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 if you're not careful, your spouse can look at it as a mistress. Yes. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so for me, I just I knew that I had to blend my company, okay. family, business. But, you know, everything's a season, too. I'm not saying 
that's the right it was the right thing for me at that time right but now where i'm at i'm saying you know there needs to be a separation smart. now smart you know okay i appreciate that thank you man awesome thank you all right all right guys so this has been another constructive conversation with mr james how can they find you if people want to find out more about you yeah they can go on the website legacy airs productions mm -hmm. and uh, they can find me there uh you know under speakers and uh, they can find all my information Awesome. It's been a pleasure having you. Likewise. Thank you, sir. Much respect. What's up, everybody? It's James Sanders III here with uh, Constructive Conversations with Raphael Locklear. Please do your, do your part to like, comment, and subscribe, and find him on YouTube and Spotify and other platforms as well, too. Peace.